Hello ladies and gents, this is uh, the second version of my hard surface shader. Uh, in this one I have integrated all of the major features that I want to integrate. <clears throat> there will be some more work going to, to efficiency optimization, code layout organization, things like that that need to be done. But for the most part, um, it's complete. So uh, I'm just going to run through each thing at, at a time I guess. Uh, so the first things first is uh, adding a second layer to the shader. So just like before, this adds a second layer, and this is all based on this RGBA mask, which has up to four masks in it. Um, later on I'll explain what the fourth one is. Um, and then what we have here is we have the UV scale for the diffuse, uh, glossy, and specular values. Uh, as you can see in the bu and and normals too by the way, so each scale um, is representative. For some reason, the smoothness doesn't update in this one, but um, oh yeah, that's because I have to have derived maps turned on. Right. So derived maps basically enables you to uh, get this information uh, through the glossy here. So you have this, and then the UV scale will take that same diffuse and basically use it as glossy, and then give you sliders to adjust it. Um, I'm, I'm open to adding more adjustment sliders for the derivation process, um, but uh, basically it just adds breakup to your to your glossiness, and for the most part, um, between that and a detail layer, uh, it's, it's perfectly, like, you know, acceptable. It, it seems to really break up the glossy enough that it, it doesn't break the illusion. Alright, so now we're that we've added, added added derived maps, and we're gonna add our third layer. Uh, this one is a very miscolored rust, but I, I did that kind of as a debug. Um, and this is our uh, well, it's rust. <laughs> so as before, you can use the, the slider here to adjust the strength of the blend um, as well as the contrast. Uh, so and, and also you have a specular control over every layer as well, um, so you're going to want to keep that in mind. Um, I'm going to reduce the glossiness, make it just really rough, really rough. Okay, let's look at our validation. Yeah, it's too low. Anyway, so that's our third layer, and then now for the fourth layer, we can add a fourth layer, and this is a, a dirt blend layer on the bottom here as you can see, let's turn it on and off. And all these layers are completely independent, so if you decide you don't want to layer, say, this layer here, uh, then I turn this off, and in the compiled version of the shader, it doesn't load the textures or anything. So if, if you want to make an optimization or something, um, then you can do that, and all the layers are independent from each other. It's just like having a material layer, only they're derived. Next up is uh, the, probably the most exciting thing, and I, l I left it for one of the last uh, things I talked about because it's so cool. So here's the generate layer normals. So what this does is this creates a, uh, a normal differentiation between the layers, um, and it's controllable via the gen normal offset, which is this here. As you can see, you can get too extreme. This is very much a subtlety thing. Um, you can adjust exactly how much separation there is uh, with the strength slider, which I think I need to increase this the uh, strength number here so we can get a little bit more of a definition. But uh, the offset controls how detailed that gets, so it's going to be about striking the right balance, um, and uh, it's going to be a little bit easier to see what that effect is on the more broad surface. As you can see, it's a little bit pixelated. Unfortunately, without sampling the texture like double the amount of times I am, uh, it's impossible to get a more refined version. So this is going to be something that I look into, um, but I don't have a solution for now. If, if any shader gurus out there have a solution that think might work, then definitely let me know. But uh, when it's used subtly, it's just it's really nice that it can pick up those crisp paint edges uh, and uh, a fair bit of it has to do with your your uh, not only how your mask is made but your uh, mask contrast as well it controls kind of how intense that that uh, normal bumpiness is as well um, so 
the more of a gradient you have, obviously, the, the better this will look. Um, I'm looking into getting the LODs for in the textures for this uh, to sort of blur it out, like using a mip map almost to kind of soften the edge a little to interpolate. Um, maybe that'll work actually. But regardless, uh, what this does is this just allows you to create this real nice, you know, you get all the detail from all the layers, you get the normals, the specular, the glossy, and though it's not exactly accurate, um, you can get a very convincing look and very cheaply because you can instance all this across um, you know, as many assets as you want, as I mentioned before, and the more you instance it across, the the, the more optimized the, your setup will be. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, the shader as it is now. I am working on some features that are for my private use, but um, I will be releasing a tutorial um, that covers how to create this shader in, in its current form. Um, I will probably limit that to three layers. The fourth layer was a bit tricky, so I'm not going to put that into a tutorial format, I don't think. Um, but this will be also added to my Cry FX effects series. So, uh, thank you for watching. Um, if you guys have any ideas for additions to or to the shader or whatever, just let me know. All right, thanks.